Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. We are a house church network. We celebrate the gathering of the saints by meeting in homes the way they did in the early church from Pentecost until Christianity was legalized and they were called out of the homes into the former pagan auditoriums. Uh, so we meet in homes the way they used to th throughout the New Testament. Once you realize the whole of the New Testament was written by apostles doing church in the home, to people who are doing church in the home, it will change your perspective on, on Christianity. It will, under, it will change how you understand the New Testament when you realize he, these are apostles who are used to meeting in homes, sharing responsibility, rotating homes, rotating who leads, and writing to people about how to walk out their faith within the context of the relationships that come when you meet in people's homes week in, week out. So CWOWI.org. Today, talking about being bewitched, asking the question, are you bewitched? This is a, I want to share with you how not to get off balance. And I, I share this oftentimes uh, along the lines of uh, people ask me, how, how do I know what I'm getting is accurate and real? Well, in Galatians chapter three and verse one, Paul writes to the Galatians. Now, the Galatian church uh, can be seen like in Acts 14, where Paul's at Lystra and some of the other cities. It's a whole region of modern day Turkey. So he's talking about a wide swath of, of area in modern day Turkey. And he writes to them and he says, oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you. Now that's interesting. Why would he say to Christians who has bewitched you? And he says, and, and this is how he says, he says that you would leave the things of the spirit to go back under the Mosaic law. And he goes on and he says this, he says, when, when God does miracles in your midst, does he do it by the spirit of God or does he do it by the hearing of the Mosaic law? So here we are some, you know, 20, 25 years after the day of Pentecost and miracles are just part of the home fellowships that they're meeting in, the home churches that they're meeting in. So much so that Paul says, now guys, when, when God does miracles in your midst, is it by the Holy Spirit or is it by the reading of the Mosaic law? So what Paul's talking about when he says, who bewitched you, he's talking about leaving the freedom and the simplicity of faith in Christ and the things of the spirit and growing up in Christ for a formula for, for going back under the law, going back under legalism. It's interesting, the word that he used here, Bascano, uh, in the Greek, uh, that's how I pronounce it, B-A-S-K-A-N-O. The Latin version of that is where we get the word fascinate. It's, so the Latin version of that Greek is, is the word where we get the word fascinate. Most people believe that's where the root comes from. But in the Greek, what it means is to, that someone would become so fascinated, so fixated on a teaching that they have lost the ability to reason for themselves. And it's a form of manipulation. It's a form of half-truths where a person is so focused on one element of the faith or one element, one teacher exclusively or something where they're just doing, you know, a bunch of, they're, they're, they're not connected to the rest of the body of Christ. And they become fascinated or they become uh, enthralled and focused on one particular segment. Maybe, maybe all one person deals with is the shape of the earth or maybe a, somebody's rapture or non-rapture uh, theology, and they leave the balance of the rest of the body of Christ. Maybe it's on something else. Maybe, you know, because people come, become fixated. And in recent years, we've had things like politics and the pandemic with COVID. We've had different fad topics and, and subjects that have gone around. But let's look at this a little, cl close, a little more closely about how Paul said, you know, who has bewitched you, who has caused you to be fascinated with things that are not of the spirit, that you've left the things of the spirit of God to go back under legalism, the legalism of the Mosaic law. Well, the word bewitched, it's interesting because in the Hebrew, we find that in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. <clears throat> now in 1 Samuel 15, what we have is we have King Saul, the very first king of Israel, and Samuel, the prophet, the last of the judges, the last one who transitions from the, the rule of the judges of Israel to actually a king, King Saul. And one of the things that King Saul was commanded to do by God through the prophet was to destroy all the, the rest of the Amalekites. Uh, the Amalekites were cousins to Israel and they should have known the God of Israel and walked with the God of Israel. But in Exodus chapter 17, Amalek ambushed the brand new nation Israel as soon as they came out of the Red Sea 
As soon as they came out of the sea, they were ambushed in Exodus 17. And God told Moses, he said, uh, he said I'm going to have war with Amalek uh, until they're wiped out. So some 400 years later, Saul is said, I want you to wipe out the rest of the Amaleks because I remember what I promised Moses. And King Saul uh, sets aside not only the king and some others of his family we find out later, but he also sets aside, as he told the prophet Samuel, the best of the, the animals, the sheep and, and oxen and such, because he wants to sacrifice to the Lord. So what we have here is that God commands Saul to do something, and Saul does it halfway. He, he halfway obeys, and he sets aside uh, every, the best of the animals for sacrifice to the Lord and the most valuable possessions and things of that nature. And when the prophet Samuel comes to him, and Saul says, hey, I've obeyed the Lord. And Samuel says, then why do I hear these animals? And Saul says, well, we're going to sacrifice those to the Lord. And Samuel said, you did not fully obey the Lord. He told you what to do and you, you didn't do it. And he says this in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 and 23. He says, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. In other words, just obey. Don't... A lot of times, you know, it take a little side trip here. Sometimes I'll, I remember one time I got a student in my office and they said, you know, God's dealing with me about working in the nursery and that I should be working in the nursery. But I really want to be an usher. I have an opportunity to be an usher. What should I do? And the, in their mind, they're thinking, I'm still obeying the Lord because he's dealing with me about being in the, the nursery, but I'm, I want to be an usher. And the deal was their ego. An usher is a person of authority who, who helps people, who escorts them to their seat during church service and working in the nursery, wiping babies' bottoms and cleaning spit up and everything else is a thankless job that's not seen by anybody but the Lord. And they're having this battle in their mind, should I obey or should I sacrifice? And what, what Samuel told the prophet, uh, uh, King, or what Samuel the prophet told King Saul was this. He said, Re because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, why is rebellion the way King Saul did it as witchcraft? The reason is because King Saul presented half-truths. The reason is that King Saul manipulated the word of the Lord to his own appetites, to his own agenda, to his own desires. God said to wipe out everybody, and Saul said, I'm only going to do that part way, and the rest I will sacrifice to God, and God will be okay with it. And, and the prophet Samuel said, no, no, no. He said, your rebellion is like witchcraft. And the reason for witchcraft, like it's like witchcraft, is we go back to Galatians chapter 3. And the reason for that is because it's manipulation, because it's presenting half-truths, because it's, it's as Paul said to the, to the Galatians, who has bewitched you that you would leave the things of the Spirit to go back under the Mosaic law. And so, in other words, the witchcraft is presented as a, as a means of manipulation and half-truths. So you say, okay, well, well, how do I stay away from that, John? How do I, how do I stay away from that? What is one of the, the markers that you are being manipulated, that you are being brought under the control, that you are leaving the freedom, the things of the Spirit, to go back under rules, regulations, and formulas? And we, we find this also in the balance of Paul's teachings in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 3 and 4. And in 2 Corinthians 11, Paul's writing to the Corinthians and he just tells them, he said, I'm afraid for you. Because in the same way that Satan deceived Eve, tricked Eve, I'm concerned that, that Satan will come in and trick you from the simplicity that is in Christ to give you a more complicated faith. That they will present another gospel and they will come in with another spirit that we don't have and another Jesus who we have not preached. And so the concern was there in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3 and 4 is that, that, that Satan very subtly gets a person to leave the simplicity of their faith in Christ to go after more complicated formulas and ways of thinking they're pleasing God. And this is, the way, this is the marker. This is how you can divide if, if you are being bewitched, if you're being manipulated, if you're getting off balance, listening to half-truths or becoming fixated or fascinated with one particular element of the body of Christ. You know, you should be connected to the whole body. I tell our house churches, be connected to the rest of the body of Christ. You, you, sh you should, And you should read and, and, and listen to a variety of different subjects, but know your core first. Know your core. But here's the thing. 
um, that the idea, well, let me say the simple simplifying how to how to stay simple with that is this. If you look in the Gospels, if you look in the letters and uh, that Paul wrote and you look at, at what Peter wrote, the, the simplicity of the gospel is very simple. Look at the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5 and look at verse you know 20. Look at the contrast between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, say it's from verses 17 to 22 to get that context. And what's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness, kindness. That's very simple. That's where the Lord will be leading you. That's the fruit of the Spirit. He stays within what He is and who He is. He will always lead you in love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness and patience and meekness and kindness and such. And Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter uh, 1 and verses 3 and 4, and then he goes into verse 5 through 10, 5 through 8. And he says this, he says, being diligent with all diligence, add to your faith knowledge and moral excellence. Those two things, moral excellence and knowledge. Knowledge, continue to grow and learn in the Lord. And moral excellence means moral excellence or virtue in the King James Version. And he says, so then you add to that. What are you going to add? Self-control. And then he says to that, you're going to add consistency in that self-control. And when you've got that consistent self-control and you've added moral excellence and you've added knowledge in the ways of the Lord, that leads to godliness. That means an overall quality of your life that is all about God and godly. That doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you're godly. And then he says that leads to, aga or to excuse me, brotherly love and then to agape love. And Peter concludes and he says, if these things are in you and abounding, they will make you so that you're not barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Are you growing in those areas? What Satan wants to do is get you looking off over in another direction to focus on end times or to focus on the, the pandemic or to focus on politics or to focus on you know, the, the rapture or to focus on the signs in the skies or to focus on the shape of the earth or to focus on whatever the case is. When the gospel, certainly the Lord Jesus and certainly in the letters, present a very simple faith, develop Christian character, moral excellence and knowledge and consistency, a self-control and consistency and godliness and love life and love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness. These are the simple things. And Paul said, Satan will beguile you, will deceive you, will bewitch you and get you to leave the simplicity of the faith. And pretty soon you're believing another gospel. You've received another spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. You've received another Jesus that Jesus would never be teaching. And so how do you measure this? Ask yourself, am I living a complicated faith? Do I think that if I do X, God will do Y? Do, you, do I think that God expects me to do something, like attend church every time the day, door is open or something? If you can't point back your activities to growing in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness, kindness, moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, consistency in that self-control. If you can't point to those things and say, this is leading me back to this, then you've, you've entered into, you, you've left possibly, have become fascinated or been bewitched or been presented half-truth so that you focus on things other than what the gospel uh, would have and what the Lord would have you do. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't leave the simplicity of Christ for complicated issues, you know, you know, pay your 20 bucks and get a prophecy a day or, or whatever the case is, or, or, you know, that you've got to feel you've got to have your finger on the pulse of everything that's happening out there and politics and the world and the prophetic and everything else. Draw back and say, what's the Lord asking me to do today? I can tell you right now, it's going to be the difficult decision that leads you into moral excellence, that leads you into knowledge and, and self-control and consistency and love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and patience and meekness and kindness. These are the areas that the Lord leads, well, leads us in. These are the simplicity of the faith. This is right, keeping right with the, because the spirit of truth will only guide you into truth. And these are the truths that are presented. So if you're out there and you say, oh my, I've become, my faith has become complicated. I need to draw back, repent, and return to the simplicity and just say, what's Jesus asking me to do today? What's, what's going to test my patience and my consistency? Let me grow up in him. Let me make right decisions in the simplicity of the knowledge of Christ. All right, hope this has been a blessing to you. John Fenn, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. Bye-bye.